I'd like to get rid of those things sometimes. Oh, you so would I. Real close. <laughs> <laughs> we don't even know for sure what color his eyes are. But how are we going to get close to him? Well, I guess we could go for a walk across the street. After all, we do know it's scheduled pretty well. Yeah. Oh, and we don't know it to the very minute. There we'd be in front of his apartment house, just going up and down. People would think we were picketing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're going to do whatever we do. Then the only thing we have to do is go and get him. Nancy! Nice thing is to do not do visiting gentlemen. All right, you figure it out, man. Oh, the real nice thing to happen would be if Mr. O'Finn would come visiting us. Yeah. <laughs> and then how I gave 
going to be coming up, uh, you know, she used to try and steal it on Sundays, but I forgive her now. But don't you think we the other bowl of the thirtieth of all? I don't know what I'll do without it. They'll bury her in it, I suppose. Yes, I suppose. <laughs> That's why I took my money out of the knitted bag I gave her. She won't need money anymore. No. <laughs> Okay, Kramer. 
Get on the phone and get the wills working. There's a phone, isn't there? Oh, yes, it's in the kitchen behind you. Okay, what I'd like to know first is this miss. Oh, Hildegard! <laughs> you may use my, my first name. <laughs> miss Hildegard, whatever gave you the idea that you ought to phone the police about this matter? Oh, well, well because Elizabeth died under suspicious circumstances. Just what was suspicious? Well, it was so sudden. Dear Elizabeth was in the best of health, and then at lunchtime she began acting strange. She turned kind of pale and looked like she was getting sick. And then suddenly she complained of crap. And then she just keeled over. Mm. <laughs> Did somebody call a doctor? <laughs> <laughs> Did anybody call a doctor? No, we didn't. No. But surely you must have seen that this lady was in serious condition. Yes. We all. We talked about calling it. Yes, we talked about it. You talked about it. But then we decided it weren't any use. Poor Elizabeth was already too far gone. At that point, we decided to just let her die in pain. <laughs> See, Mr. Open, we sort of already knew. Oh, you sort of knew what? Uh, we sort of knew that it wasn't used to any call on the doctor because because Elizabeth had been poisoned. Yes. Did you all think she'd been poisoned? Yes. Why did you all think she'd been poisoned? No stamp <laughs> Look, I asked a question, I want an answer. Why do you think she'd been poisoned? Oh, isn't she masterful? <laughs> you know, he's got a big, strong voice like Herbert. When Herbert used to yell at me like that, I got chills up and down my spine. <laughs> <laughs> do you have chills now? I certainly do. <laughs> Look here, ladies. You don't seem to realize how important this is. I'm a police officer, and I came here to investigate a homicide. And it's just been suggested that this lady had been poisoned. Now, I want to know more about that. Mr. Fick, you are raising your voice unnecessarily. Perhaps you have misjudged her ages. None of us is dead. Oh, she don't hate. What? <laughs> I said that none of us is dead. You're a draft? No. <laughs> none of us is dead. None of us does math. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, Open. Watch yourself. And none of your station language here either. There are ladies present. <laughs> Kramer, if you're so smart, why don't you ask the questions? See if you can get some answers. Don't look at me. You're the boss. Oh, yes, oh, yes that's right, Mr. Open. <laughs> you're the boss. <laughs> and, and we won't answer any questions. Unless they come from the boss. <laughs> well, somebody better answer my question then. Well, what do you think, Mr. O'Finn? You're the detective. Do you think she was poisoned? My dear lady. Oh! Did you hear that? <laughs> <laughs> he called me his dear lady. <laughs> we will not know whether poison was involved until there's an examination of the body. And it will take a doctor to do that. But right now, I think there'd be a better explanation. Oh, we already know. Why do you know? Somebody has to die. Oh, Nettie! <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell him everything. It won't be any fun if you do. <laughs> what is all this? You all say the lady had been poisoned. You all know, in fact, like how she was poisoned. Well, somebody better talk. You mean a third degree? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm first. 
Why should you be first? Because I know a thing or two about everyone in this house, and I can tell Mr. Olfin everything just like that. Oh, it will be lies, all lies. Mm. Do never tell the truth, Lucy. Ladies, stop it. Kramer, we've got to get out of here. This place is a booby house. <laughs> Maybe there's something to it, though. They all said that dead one was poisoned. There has to be some truth to it. Not if they're all crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and I swear they are. The live ones are the ones who ought to be examined. I'll get it. That's the ladies from the morgue. Was the can full? 
Well, it was about half full yesterday. I remember since I sprinkled some in our basement. Hold on now. Hold on a minute. Arsenic symptoms happen half an hour to an hour. So that must mean she ate or drank something before lunch. Oh. But did she? Well, it's a strict rule in my house that there's no eating between meals. My boarders get enough for their money as it is. And I can't afford to be feeding them between meals. Mm. Yeah, but you know you have to go out how Elizabeth always was about that rule. Mm. Yeah, she cheated. Yeah. She would sneak into the kitchen sometimes, Mr. Open, and get herself an extra cup of tea. Craig, go get that tea and see if there's a cup. Oh, there won't be a cup. She always washed hers. Okay, just the tea. If there's arsenic in it, we've got it clear. Oh, clear, clear. Oh, girls, Mr. Pink Flipper. Ladies, are you trying to make fun of me? Oh, oh no, no, Mr. Open. We would never do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm beginning to wonder. Here's the tea can. There seems to be a white powder mixed in with this tea. We can give it to our chemist to analyze, though. I'm beginning to think there actually may be a murder case here, after all. Kind of looks like it, doesn't it? Give this back to my house. All right, ladies. After a tentative conclusion and examination of the body and the tea, of course, that there's been a murder committed here. Whoa! I'm going to swirl! Oh, Mr. Pitt said there's been a murder! Oh, I'm going to swoon it, Bertie. He already knew there was a murder. Mm. We told Mr. O'Finn, didn't we? Oh, how dare you, Nettie! Mr. O'Finn is a detective! We just gave him a clue and he figured it out for himself. Yeah, that's right. I beg your pardon, Mr. O'Finn. You figured it out for yourself. They're toying with me, Kramer. They're playing games. Hold me back, girl, Saints. There'll be another murder committed here. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. so cute get mad. Stop it. Stop it, I said. I'll throw you all in the clean. Oh, oh. Is it the to be fun? I would have missed all the 
I'm getting a little bit more of the picture now. You all knew about poison after Elizabeth started acting sick. But it was as if you were all expecting a murder to maybe even happen. Well, you might say that we was hoping. And on top of that, the murderer put arsenic in the tea without knowing who would be the first to drink it. Maybe the odds were on Elizabeth. But the murderer couldn't be sure she'd be the first to drink it. It was as if the murderer didn't care who she murdered, but just wanted to commit a murder. Oh, he's getting warmer. <laughs> See, I told you he could do it. You know, he's almost as clever as my Herbert. Your Herbert? He was never yours that I knew of. Yeah, well, he always was mine, and he always will be. <clears throat> Ladies, please, let's all stick to the subject. Oh, girls, listen to Miss Trophy. Thank you, Miss <laughs> Hildegard. Yes, Miss Hildegard. As I was saying, the murderer didn't have anything particularly against Elizabeth. But I'm real glad it was Elizabeth who drank the tea. Why are you glad Elizabeth drank the tea? Because she never, ever let nobody else look through the binoculars. Oh! Yes! <laughs> <laughs> What's this about binoculars? Oh, I left the kettle on the stove. Must go. Oh no, no. You don't go change the subject that quick. What's this about binoculars? You had to go and get it away, Ned. Shame on you. I'm sorry. Oh, Hildegard, it would have come out sometime. This Jorfin is such a clever detective, you know. Well, what did you look at with these? Oh, don't make us tell you that, Mr. Field. <laughs> yeah. Kramer, what do you make of it? Well, you don't use binoculars to look at something inside a house, usually. <laughs> you look at something outside. Outside. Hmm. A window. <laughs> Those are my apartment windows. Across the streets, 
but the beautiful body and features of an O Finn. <laughs> They're all in love with you. Shut up, Critter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but it's a plain fact. They're in love with you. And they say to themselves, Wouldn't it be lovely if we could get him over here to look? And so, they go asking around and find out that you're a detective in homicide. <laughs> now, think of it, Dennis, my boy. What would you do if you wanted to get someone from homicide? to your house. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Oh yes. The very fact that they are all delighted with a murder proves it. And the other fact that the murdering lady didn't care who she murdered. Just dumped the arsenic willy-nilly into the sea can. They just had to have a murder. It's a dirty lie! Oh, you underestimate your charm, Dennis, my lad. <laughs> These ladies are so in love with you that one of them committed a murder just to get you into this house, old man. You tell anybody in the department, I'll kill you with these bare hands of mine. How does it feel, old man, to be the subject of such criminal devotion? I'll refuse to handle this case. That's what I'll do. And what excuse will you give to the captain? <laughs> oh, the saints preserve me. What will I do? We're going to have a tea party, Mr. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I hope you like tea, Mr. <laughs> 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 Than that. Well, you're not going to dump it on my lap. 
I didn't say I was. I have a little strategy worked out. Like what? The old gals love me there, asking questions and things like that. But they don't give me any sensible answers. So I think the best thing to do is to leave them alone. Let them stew a while. Maybe then they'll be willing to cough up a clue. Oh, Finn, you're a genius. That I may be. But your strategy better work quick. The captain down at headquarters is going to get the report about the arsenic, and they'll be coming to you for the explanation. I'll have the answer. But right now, I should have hid that in a better spot. Someone stole it. If you don't know, it's my beer bottle. I better go home and rest my weary bones. The old gals know where I live. If they want to spill any beans or ask any questions, they know where to find me. <laughs> <laughs>
chair and he's in his undershirt. Yeah. yeah. I can see that lovely strawberry mark on his shoulder. Ooh, that may work. Ooh, ooh. Yes, as I said, he's sitting in a chair and he's thinking something. Ooh. Ooh. What is it? It looks like it might be beer. Oh. <laughs> he should be here. Drinking oh, tea. And giving us the pleasure of his company. Yeah. He just Sweet old ladies, 
but left to the mercy of a fiendish murderess. Mm -hmm. And that she's interviewing the sweet old ladies right now. <gasps> and Mr. O'Finn seems to be coming right over. <laughs> I imagine my readers just eat up with that 
This might be described as a crime of passion. A crime of passion. Well, of course, what else? It's the most obvious thing in this case. This crime was a crime committed for love. Um, would this be a variation of the old triangle, or would this be a hexagon? <laughs> <laughs> Miss Rogers, are you threatening me? Oh, I'm merely looking for a story. Let's see, what would the headline be? Woman murders, Bible for the sake of detective. Does that appeal to you? Or could he use the word Herod to someone? Herod? Well, yes. It's the best word in the dictionary. You get told that a group of females is romantically involved with just one male. I know what it is. And there must be a word for it you're trying to call. Libel, maybe. Oh, Mr. Trumpet. <laughs> now you're right with me. But not quite with me, huh? This is too good a story. Then think of this as a public security citizen. Do you want to demoralize the police department? Well, I don't know. It might be an interesting project, though. What are you doing exactly? I'm looking at you, trying to decide. We read a picture of you that the public would believe they put you would be capable of arousing such murderous passion in such gentle females. Yes, maybe they will. You won't get any pictures of me. You're not bad, old friend. Not bad. How's your profile? Very good. Very good. <laughs> you know, friend, I can make you the sweetheart of every woman in town. Young women of all ages lining up, ready to commit murder, just to make you well pay attention to them. Miss Rogers, please! You can't do anything! Well, sir, a wave of homicide. Hey, you might even get a spread in life. You'll be a national hero. Miss Rogers, please! I'll do anything. Anything? Well, anything, for instance? Yes, <laughs> anything you say. Now that interesting. We might talk this over, but not here. We need a more private place for a talk like this. Say, where do you normally go when you take a girl out to dinner? I don't usually take girls out to dinner. <laughs> I see. A confirmed bachelor. Well, maybe it's time you got unconfirmed. I think I better stay where I'm at. <laughs> Remember, okay, you've got to uh, convince me of something important. <laughs> what is your attraction, Owen? Is it your boy shyness? For instance, I know a lot of women that if they had to convince a girl of something, they'd start out by grabbing her and kissing her. I guess I'm not that tired. <laughs> it's your opinion. That's the thing. You ever think of, well, changing, of trying to be that way? Miss Rogers, <laughs> I am to. Well, the tea is steaming. It'll be ready in a minute or two. Oh, and here are the questions. One for everyone, and three for Miss Rogan. I still don't see why three. <laughs> Miss Rogan is not a glutton, you know. Yes, I know, but he's oh. a big, strong man, and he's lots of oh. food. You're just stingy, huh, <laughs> God? I'm not stingy. But if you're going to be so extravagant with your baking, I'll have to raise your board, that's all. Well, the FDR's not old Jim, he's old hard. My sister said it for my birthday. Three years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. O'Finn, would you like to come to the kitchen with me? Well, I phone my editor. Make sure I get the facts straight. Yes, sure. Excuse me, <laughs> We'll be right back. <laughs> Here I am again.
not fair if you ask me. You're right, Samantha. It's, it's not a bit fair. Hmm. Mr. Ophid belongs to us. <laughs> Mr. Ophid is much too old for her. She's just a slip of a girl. Plus, natural that she should like him. We understand that. Gentlemen. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. we, then we better hurry. 
hurry up before they come back. Oh, oh yes. How are we going to arrange it? Yeah, that's what I want to know. We want to keep up with the murderer as a secret. Oh, yes, it, it wouldn't be as exciting if the bird kept as a secret. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But how are we going to arrange it so that we won't see the certain one of us putting the poison in Miss Roger's cup? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Oh, we could all hide our eyes. Yes, yes, yes. Well, yeah, well, but, uh, well, we might hear who the murderer is. I can tell you what, Bernie, by the way your bones creak. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't creak. I guess you do. Just like an old stagecoach. <laughs> well, I'm not old enough to remember how a stagecoach creaks. But maybe you are. Oh. <laughs> You want 
about not wasting your cigarette. So, I'm not going to waste this. Uh, it's been fun though, that doesn't have to go to waste. Uh, and then he would drink it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I want any. Yes, you do. What are you talking about now? Of course you do. No. I wonder, should I keep them for myself? <laughs> <laughs> 
Lucy, you're so morbid. Well, I can't go too safe around this house these days, you know. You can move if you're quite. Well, that's what you want me to do, isn't it? So then you can have Mr. O'Finn all be yourself. Well, I'll take my chances of staying. <laughs> well, they really don't have anything to give her. My pearls were all I had. Well, do you think it'd be proper? It's not very expensive, but Nettie liked it. Yes, yeah, she used to steal it from me sometimes. <laughs> well, I think rather than looking nice, Nettie ought to smell nice. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Jen. Miss <laughs> Hildegard found the body. 
I should have known. Then can anybody give me any information that will lead to solving the murder? <laughs> I see it's going to be like last time. I'll let you have this. You say you're all frightened. We've seen the killer strike a second time. If you hold back any more information, you may be allowing the killer remain to strike maybe a third time. Oh, oh, Miss Rupert is right. We are all in danger of our lives. Do you have any clues, Bertie? Hmm, I don't, but I wish I did. Can anybody tell me anything? No. All right. I'll let you have this. The captain down at the headquarters has found it very strange that there's been two murders in the same house. And if they're not solved, he's going to blame me. He'll have me pounding and be back in uniform. Ew. Back in uniform. <laughs> <laughs> and with these feet of mine, not with these feet. Oh. So you see, ladies, this is really important to me. It means my job. So I've got to find out who's been fighting better up around here. So I'm not going to leave until I do. Oh! Mr. is going to stay. Mr. Rupin is going to live here. Do you think that's quite proper, though? We've always just had our way for Well, it's up to me to say what's proper in this house. <laughs> you take care of him, yes. There, there's, there's two rooms vacant now. There's a Elizabeth Center. Yes. No. It's Barbara. Oh, yeah. It's Barbara. He can have his choice. Oh, just imagine Mr. Open for breakfast and for dinner, and Anna stays up for tea besides. Ladies, please. I am not a stray dog. <laughs> Right here is 
ink. Oh, well, if, I suppose you're going to ink them. Then don't stop me from bothering you. You go on right ahead. Hey. <laughs> now take my stew. We have to make sure it's done right. Oh, but you come back. <laughs> you're holding my head. Oh, dear. <laughs> I promise I won't squeeze it off as much as I want to. It's very tempting. I'm just kidding. Yeah. 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 Anything, you want to be glad, Bertie? When's the last time a man held your hand? Oh, never mind. <laughs> oh, never mind you how long it's been, Lucy. Uh, by the way, Miss Trophin, do you know how to take fingerprints? Yeah. Oh, yes. In fact, he's very good at it. Hey, Ophid, why don't you take these ladies' fingerprints? <laughs> Kramer, you keep out of this. Oh, but please, Mr. Ophid, we might try to have you do this. Yes, this man has got my fingers all black! <laughs> <laughs> it can be washed. Yeah. Miss Samantha, Ooh. it's your turn. But Mr. Ophid, you're just being stubborn. That's right. I'm a stubborn man. That's not stubbornness. That's a strength of character. <laughs> now you see, I never had a strength of character. <laughs> Lucy, I just can't understand why you still admire Herbert. Strength of character, indeed. He left you, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. He left me. Yeah. I was the stubborn one in that relationship. <clears throat> The way I chased that man, yeah. and the way he resisted me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was a real strength of character right there. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies, we'll analyze the buttermilk down at the lap, and of course, we'll make sure what Miss Nettie died of. But meanwhile, we can assume that it was arsenic. Now, did anybody else ever drink buttermilk? Oh, nobody else. It wasn't furnished with the regular book. No. So she always bought it herself at the grocery store. Then the murderess knew that it was going to be Miss Nettie who would be poisoned. Uh, mm. Yeah. Must have. You know, Nettie's old fault, you see. She was stupid enough to drink something like buttermilk. Now it's so easy to put a white powder, like rat poison, into buttermilk. Yes, <laughs> yes but poor Nettie wasn't very bright. No. It's your turn to be fingerprinted, Lucy. All right. <clears throat> now listen here, young man. I want to get one thing straight. I don't want to have to have my hands soiled. Thank you. 
you're actually not. No. I'd give you any clues, Mr. O'Finn, if I had any. Or I'd confess anything. If I had anything to confess. Look, I don't want pity from any of you. Let's get on with the fingerprinting. Miss Hildegard, it's your <laughs> <laughs> And do your The police work is scientific these days. Science will lick this problem. Science will never lick these ladies out there. Come on, Mr. O'Fig, we're all on your side, so think hard. Yeah. Oh, young man, watch what you're doing. You pinched me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I beg your pardon, ma'am, but you've got to hold still, so I don't pinch your fingers off.
Sure. Just give me the results as quick as you can. Of course. My, my, it's been very busy, hasn't it? Yeah. Well, I still gotta go home and do a few things. What things? Oh, not much. Oh, and, uh, by the way, Mr. Ruffin, I went to your office today, and, um, this was on your desk. Oh. I decided to finish it for you. Oh. Would you like a bottle? That's what I'm waiting for. <laughs> <laughs> you speak. <laughs> oh, and I'll take that, by the way. It was lovely meeting you ladies. You have very nice hands. <laughs> Are you a skin donor? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Ta-ta. <laughs> See ya, Johnson. See ya. Ah, <laughs> oh, well, take your fingerprints, please. You're getting very scientific. I presume you haven't told me. No, we haven't solved it yet. More and more interesting. Now I wonder, how are we going to keep this out of my favor? It's a story crying to you. Jane, we agree. Yes, we agreed. And after the fact, you stood me up twice in a week. But the silence, the story keeps getting better. So the price of silence is going up. Jane, you know how they take this in the department. I'd be ruined. So you've got to solve two problems. Who killed the old lady? Well, how to keep that? I'm solving the first problem, can't you see? And we'll have to discuss the second one in private. Oh, you're just stalling, like you did last time. The story's hot, it can't be. Just come into the kitchen a minute, will you? Just oh. you and me, how exciting. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd like to know what was going on in there. You mean you don't know? If I knew, I wouldn't be asking, now would I? Well, maybe you ought to know. Though, I doubt you understand. For one thing, it's all your lady's fault. You're the ones that got that dame into this. You had to call a reporter. But we didn't know the reporter was going to be a dame. <laughs> but that's the way it happened. And of all reporters, it had to be that Jane Rogers. She's the worst. She's an <laughs> old maid, too. Get off the bed, <laughs> If you'll pardon the expression. I mean, my boy Dennis has a strange attraction for a maid, whatever it is. <laughs> <laughs> well, that chain rocks fell for the same reason you all did. We did not fall for him. No. But don't play innocent now. One of you four committed two. <laughs> Five committed two murders. Two murders nonetheless. Just to get our hero over here to investigate. Well, that Jane Rogers threatened to print the story of O'Finn's fatal charm. It was a good story, and she wanted to write it. But then, she started to like O'Finn better than the story. So, she told O'Finn that she might not print the story if he do certain things. What things? Uh, don't be so dead, Samantha. I even know what things oh, he's yes. talking about. Mm. Yes, I might be the oldest one here, but I'm not so old that I don't remember what things. Hey, often he's been putting up a mighty fine chase the past week. He's been dates with her and hasn't kept them. That's why he's in hot water now. And every time you gals commit a murder, the water gets hotter. Yeah, Matt. I you to understand that Mr. O'Finn doesn't care if that's Dame? You guessed it. Hmm. Now don't misunderstand. It's not that O'Finn doesn't care for the fairer sex. <laughs> <laughs> he does. <laughs> but he likes to spread his charm around. That's why he went through life as a bachelor. Oh, and that Miss Rogers is chasing him. That's what she's doing. Hmm. You see, I would know. I used to chase her but around for years. And Mr. O'Finn doesn't want to be caught any more than ever was. But he is caught. And that Roger's dame has the goods on him. She can print a story that can kill him. What's he gonna do? Well, if he can't do anything for himself, then we've got to help him! Yes! Yeah, yeah. All right. Oh, folks, oh, hold on to your seats. We've got something to tell you. What is it, O'Finn? Jane will tell it. 
so many things. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha. 
<laughs> Kramer, I'm relieved, I tell you. I'm glad this thing's over. Oh, I'm relieved too, Dennis, and you give all of your attention to me. Well, here I am, all ready to go. And Miss Burgess, I may not be around for the ceremony, so here's a little wedding present ahead of time. I'd like you to promise me something, Dennis. Will you promise? Sure, I promise. Well, I absolutely forbid you to eat any of that candy in that box. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha. 